Hey guys, this is the Wings Mobile Detailing again podcast here, and I'm with Philip Miranda, another detailer here in Richmond, Virginia. We did a collaboration before on a previous podcast. Uh, so you guys stay tuned because today we're going to talk about ceramic coatings, basics of business, uh, detailing itself is really going to cover that uh, branding, marketing, but especially more technical. We're going to get more technical into detailing, PPF, clear coating. And for you guys who is looking into starting a mobile detailing business or a car enthusiast that want to do detailing yourself or looking for a detailing company, definitely this is a must listen to because we got two, two minds here in the detailing business uh, to get together. So uh, thank you, Phil, for, for joining the, the podcast. Yeah, thank you, Andre, for having me again. I uh, really enjoyed it last time. And yeah, really going to be enjoying talking about some of the products or some of the, some of the uh, tips and business and things like that that we're going to be talking about today. So yeah, it, it'd be good to really uh, combine our know-how and help other detailers too. I think that's a, a big thing uh, that we're trying to do is help other detailers um, start their business or just make their business more profitable. Awesome. So we'll jump into the introduction and we're going to get started too. Welcome to the Wings Mobile Detailing Business and Automotive Podcast. The only podcast that will guide you on how to start and grow six-figure companies. As our team expand from one business location to worldwide domination, you will get step-by-step -step insights from a millennial franchiser and franchise owner with your host, Andre Mezzalera. All right, guys. So right now we're going to be talking about PPF film versus ceramic coatings. Now there are uh, quite a few shops out there that offer PPF film and, and what is that anyway? What is PPF film? Well it's paint protection film. Um, that is a layer of protective vinyl that is installed on your vehicle. Uh, you can put it either on your hood, yeah. bumpers, mm -hmm. fenders, um, you can even wrap your entire vehicle with it if you want. It's, it's really uh, amazing protection. There's different companies um, that offer that, and there are some that even offer the self-healing PPF film, right. which is which yeah. is pretty awesome stuff. I like I, I I like to compare things when people really want to get a, uh, to know what actually PPF is. Mm. Is to compare like a like a screen protector on your phone. Yeah, you know that plastic. You know it's protected when you put the plastic on your phone. Yeah, uh, and, you know messing with it. Uh, there's some pros and cons, obviously, right? Yep. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I guess let's talk about some of the pros uh, with it. It's definitely uh, an extra layer of protection on your vehicle that is not going to wash away. Yeah. So you're, you're wrapping your vehicle, if you want to think about yeah. it, like in saran wrap, it's, mm -hmm. it's an actual layer of plastic or, or vinyl on your vehicle. So, you know, any type of bugs, bird bombs, tree junk, traffic film, anything like that. It's not going to get to the paint, to the clear coat itself, right? Exactly. It's, it's not going to touch it at all. Um, but is it impervious to anything and everything out there, even even scratches or bug etchings and, and bird droppings? So what are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm a little biased, as you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. towards ceramic coating as opposed to PPF. But as far as protecting the paint, uh, yes, you know, it's, it's a plastic. That's what I think. You know, it's a plastic and it definitely it's not going to get... A bird dropping in there mm -hmm. as normally it would etch through the clear coat of the car you have a plastic on top I mean, it's definitely gonna protect it's not gonna get to the clear coat of the car yeah that doesn't mean the paints not gonna look the, the PPF the surface is not gonna look you know dirty or degrading with time the look on the outside mm -hmm. but the paint would definitely underneath um, be in good shape it's yeah. not gonna reach the, the paint yeah exactly yeah and even with PPF film um, it can etch. Yeah. Bird droppings, bugs yeah. can, can still etch into it. But like you said, it's not hitting the paint. You can simply over, you know, what, maybe a few years, uh, depending on the type of uh, PPF film. Yeah. Some can go up to 10 years and they have warranties and things like that. But and you can I, simply yeah. tear it off and <laughs> install it again. Yeah, you can like, as opposed to I think ceramic coating where you put the ceramic there, it offer good protection. Throughout this time, you know, there's the shine that we're going to talk about, you know, mm -hmm. while you have that on the car. But ceramic coating, you have, you can also choose, you know, you want a, a two-year one, mm -hmm. three to five-year one, a 10-year lifetime one, which how, that's how they bring, but let's say a 10-year one, yeah. just like a PPF. If you get a 10-year ceramic coating, I assume you're going to spend 
about the same amount, right? With, yeah. With the with the PPF on yeah. ceramic coating, but PPF you can have a little because it's thick. You can have a little bit of a better protection, but throughout this time, you're still gonna have you know you're still gonna have a, it's not gonna beat as well. The car it's not gonna look original. That that's my bias opinion. Uh -huh. Right. <laughs> it's not gonna look original to to the vehicle because it, it's like a plastic on top. That's that's how I picture it. Yeah. And when you, as you say, when you take it off from the car, is it really, it, it, if you leave it there for 10 years, I don't know what you think, but I heard a mm. lot of cases where they take it out and they slightly damage the clear coat of the car when they're pulling it out. Right, yeah. And I'm like, what's the point then, you know, of having, you know, protecting all these years? When you take it out, you run to the risk. There's a risk. Um, yeah. I don't know what you think of the risk factor also, I mean... No, definitely, because if, if you think about, um, if it's on there for 10 years, that is just a long, long time. Yeah. And even if it's run its course, it's, its lifetime, all the UV protection is probably going to be gone from that PPF film because it does have a certain lifespan oh. of protecting UVA and UVB rays. Oh. UV protection. Okay, okay. Yeah, so... Um, I guess that's one thing that some people don't think about is the actual UV protection of clear film and ceramic coatings. It, there's, a, there's a lifetime that, um, that, that coatings in PPF film have where that protection may not be there. And, and how can you tell if it's really there or not? So, yeah, I mean, PPF film and coatings get you years of protection. Um, but like you said, I, I am a little biased towards uh, ceramic coatings also. I mean, I don't install PPF film anyway, even mm -hmm. though I will encourage some people to do it, uh -huh. especially on their bumpers or hoods if they're traveling and get a lot of bugs. Right. Yeah. Or rock chips because PPF film is the ultimate protection for rock chips. Yes. for the That's yeah, just... That's true. There's yeah. no way around that. Ceramic yeah. coatings do not protect from rock chips. Um, but yeah, you, you get... Um, into problems with PPF film with if it's not correctly installed if you have an edge anywhere mm -hmm. it just looks ugly yeah, it, yeah. It'll, it'll catch stuff it'll obviously it can be like up. professionally applied by a reputable detail or getting all the edges yep yep you gotta uh, make sure of that one more thing I, I that's another thing when I bring up I know I can sound so biased or ceramic coating but when I bring up that PPF for example as far as protecting against rock chips mm. uh, when you're getting it when you're getting rock, ch rock chips into the the clear bra, obviously it's going to get penetrated because it's, it's not a hi as hydrophobic or slick mm -hmm. as a ceramic would be. So the rock chip kind of hits it straight to the paint, right? Yeah. Straight to the bumper. And sure, you're protecting your paint. You know, awesome. If that's your, right, if that's the client's, you know, that's what they want, ultimate protection for the clear coat, awesome. But the thing is with the ceramic coating, it, it repels more. Mm. So when the rock chips, it doesn't all, uh, uh, you know always hit straight up. If it hits a little bit like that, the repellent on it, you know, it can kind of ricochet it out. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's gonna create scratches. Obviously, yeah. it's gonna make some damage. Yep. But you, I, I compare it this way: you're gonna have, let's say, a ceramic coating for ten years. You spend a certain amount of money. Let's say the same amount, mm -hmm. and a PPF for ten years. During this ten years, you're getting rock chips hitting on the bumper. And it's gonna start looking ugly in the first year. Yeah, it's exactly. Kind of like penetration on the plastic. Yep. Where, where the the rock chips from when it's getting hit and it, the car has ceramic coating on it, it may seem to be less rock chips because it's gonna repel more and protect more. Mm. And obviously, the thickness of the the ceramic coating is not that thick to the point where you would you know protect it 100. percent Yep. But then you're like, okay, so I'll go with a better protection, even if it's looking ugly throughout this time, just so I can save my paint more. And I'm like, but then you're removing it and you run to the risk of ruining it anyways. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know, am I kind of too out of, of my comparison? Uh, I, think it, it, I think it really depends on um, the quality of the, the paint on the vehicle as well. Um, you do run into risks with removing it because it is a process to remove it. You usually mm -hmm. have to heat it up. I've seen guys use a steamer or a heat gun and it's peeling off and you'd think that's got to be putting some stress uh, on it as well. And yeah, you could just run the risk of, of ruining some things on your paint with, with PPF film. 
Um, so really, I, I would I think what we would both agree on is okay. that any type of protection that you're going to put on your vehicle, you want to make sure that it is on top of um, that you are on top of the protection on your vehicle, and not just saying you have PPF film on there, you have a ceramic coating, you're good to go oh, for yeah. years. Yeah. You know, it's it's like it's the constant maintenance. You gotta know what's in there. You know what yeah. it takes, what what to expect. You're, you're never gonna have 100% protection. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Something is is gonna come along the way that is going to physically yeah. hit your paint and cause some sort of damage. Um, and even with bugs and droppings, things like that, or or acid rain, industrial fallout, all that stuff that's in the air. You know, it, it's crazy that paint is sensitive we've yeah. been hearing that more and more that the the paint on newer cars is getting thinner and that it's very very sensitive um, and any type of contact or you know even washing or drying the paint is going to yeah add some sort of micro scratch even if you can't see it right away over time it builds up yeah Overall, that's just the nature of it <laughs> car manufacturers they're probably wanting to save more and thinking up the clear coat the paint and the clear coat uh, I notice on on different car brands as well. I know yep. some are have thicker clear coats. Definitely, yeah, some uh, do. Thicker yep. paint, uh, paint, paints on the. Yeah, yeah. like and my my brother's car, like his Honda, for example. Uh, it's a ceramic it's ceramic coated, but it feels like it doesn't. It, the the paint it, it's worse than the, you know mm. than comparing to to the other car that I've seen, and when it rains, it creates water spots easier that's before the ceramic coating you know easier water spots on the paint um but i think that's in, into another topic you know as far as the paint goes yeah yeah and i thought it was super interesting the i never thought about it you know the the, the uv protection start to degrade yeah with time yeah definitely definitely and that's something that you can see more on your headlights than on your paint which is very interesting and I'm actually noticing, uh, if you check out some of our other videos where we redid our headlights on our Toyota Avalon, um, I gotta check the dates, but I know it's been at least four months. Uh -huh. And we redid the headlights, basically just needed a light polish to clear them up to get the yellowing out, which is the oxidation of the top layer of the, the polycarbonate plastic lenses. And they just take a beating from the UV rays. Yeah. They just start to, to yellow and, and oxidize. So I polished them and I did test putting a coating on it. And this is interesting because I did use, I used Ceramic Pro that I had a little sample of on the passenger side headlight. Mm -hmm. And then I used two layers of Gion Mose on the driver side. And I actually applied two layers of both. Both ceramic coatings. Both ceramic coatings, mm -hmm. uh, two layers of Ceramic Pro on the passenger side, two layers of Mose on the driver's side, both equally yellowing right now. Oh, okay, yeah. So... And it, it's from the outside, like, and then you're yeah. wondering, hmm. Yeah, <laughs> is, could that be also happening on your paint? It's not, I mean, the, the polycarbonate plastic is different than your clear coat. So your clear coat still has stronger UV protection in it, but the plastic on your headlights really don't. Yeah. So they, they just oxidize much, much quicker than your paint. Plus you're having lights from the inside going heat. out. Exactly. Heat. You got a lot of heat build up in there mm -hmm. and it just takes a beating. I mean, that's yeah. right in the front of your car. Yeah. It takes a beating. Yeah. So, but yeah, that they started turning yellow. So it got me thinking that you can't just put a ceramic coating on and leave it at that. Yeah. The maintenance is going to be important and, and putting some sort of protection on, even with ceramic coatings, I don't know if you offer it. Um, but with every, every ceramic coating, there's some sort of a maintenance wash and uh, silica topper spray. Yes, yeah. And I do it on my personal car every, yeah. every wash. <laughs> yep, <laughs> Just, yep. It, I mean, it is, I, I guess, that maintenance, that example for ceramic coating, it's recommended to, to the manufacturer, say, twice a year to do the silica reboost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some, do it, some the, do it more. Uh, yeah. I do it on a quarterly basis. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do it on a quarterly basis. I do it every, every time I wash my car. Yeah. Like, why not? You know, it's and, easy. And it's not cheap. It's not expensive like, yeah. to, to have a, a bottle of that. Yep. Yep. And so, maintenance is key when it comes to any type of protection, especially with mm -hmm. ceramic coatings, because I do install a lot. I know you install a lot. You install G Technic coatings and Ceramic Pro. Um, I use G Technic Car Pro and uh, Gion. 
Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, I, I do love all those coatings and there's a lot of pros to them. You know, they, they do offer great protection, great beading and sheeting. It makes everything yes. easier to wash, yeah, easier to maintain. yeah, And nothing really sticks to it as well, which again, just adds to the nice. cleaning ability. The shine also. Oh looks, yeah, the gloss. It's, it's better than when the car is new. Yeah. <laughs> there is that also. Exactly, uh, yeah, it's, it's just so nice. Um, there is some, some time and not really, ri- not high risk, but some risk of high spots if you're not installing it correctly, mm-hmm. but that can be yeah. remedied, that can be fixed. Yeah, I, I think just like applying a, we, we all talk about, you know, PPF and ceramic coating, all assuming that's professionally applied. Yes, right exactly. for both. For both, uh, we're still on the application process. Got to be done the right way. Still yep. run through some risks, but uh, when it comes to, I guess, the PPF, for example, uh, that we were talking about the shine. Yeah, you know that besides that, the rock chips that it's gonna starts to degrade the plastics, uh, but it's gonna protect more. Yeah. But then during this time that you, you're having the PPF or the ceramic coating, you're not going to get them with shine from the from the PPF. Some people even put ceramic coating on top of the uh, yeah. clear film right. or PPF. And I think that, you know, I mean, if, if you get a, if you get a, that, that's what I think. If you get a, a car and put clear PPF on it, you know, clear, clear bra, and then you go and ceramic coat it, I would still, you still have the ultimate protection, but mm. still the shine's not going to be the same because you're ceramic coating on top of yeah. the vinyl. Yeah, not it's, sure if you it's just that. a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that vinyl is going to give a little bit different reflection and gloss. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, depending on the type of, of vinyl that you get. But yeah, you can always tell though. Detailers can tell if the car is wrapped or not. Yeah. You, yeah. The, the feel of it, the look of it, you, you, can, you can definitely tell. Even if it's done the, by the best of the best, Mm-hmm. I can always still tell, like, oh, this is wrapped, I can tell. Yeah. You know? And, and it's not hard. It's not hard yeah. to tell that a car is wrapped. When yeah, you're, yeah, especially exactly. Especially get up close to that. Yep, that's right. Another thing that actually I just thought of is if your vehicle is, say, if it's completely wrapped, if you get into an accident or something really does brush up against it and it cuts through that, uh-huh. that PPF film, it's not bulletproof. It, I mean, obviously, if yeah. you run up against a concrete, you know, wall or something that's that's in your way then it's going to grind it right up so now you have to not only fix say your door <laughs> that uh-huh. that got hit or something that has a dent in it but it's now gone right through your ppf film so you would have to replace the door get it repainted and if you want it to all be the same again and have it all ppf filmed have that reinstalled mm-hmm. on it a lot more time, a Re- lot more expense. Remove the PPF as well? Remove it. From the entire car? Not from the entire car, but at least from that section. From that section. Yeah, okay. from that section. Um, that's that, that's true. There's that point to the removal thing. Yeah. With with the ceramic coating, if you, let's say, in, in the same time frame or in a matter of 10 years. Normally, it's ceramic coating, you know, they're at its best in the first five years, I believe. Yep. Yeah, usually. Uh, yep. But if, if they're both there... Uh, what, what was I gonna say? What was my point? <laughs> if if they are both there, the ceramic coating, the clear bra, and not only that, but you have that removal thing. You know, when you when you take it off, yep, uh, you have to pay to remove that as well. You know, yeah, and Unless then you you're take... selling the car and you're like I'm keeping the car for ten years. Yeah, while I have it, it's protected. Yeah, you know, sell it. But if you, if you want to redo it, ceramic coating can kind of obviously reprep the car. Right? Yeah, so have a fresh layer. But yeah. it's not like you're spending about half the price that you're paying to install it, but to remove it professionally. Exactly, yeah, that's right. So, I mean, it's it's pretty cool when you do see some uh, people, if they want to pay for it, and, and they have the, you know, the money for it, no problem. They can completely wrap their car, put ceramic coating right on top oh, of yeah. it, <laughs> and, you're, and you're good to go, and that's nice. But mm-hmm. yeah, for me, I, I do like to keep things simple. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of detailers out there that are huge advocates of, just wash and protect your car on a regular basis. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, if you want to get a, a ceramic coating, great, but don't think that it's going to just uh, it's the protect your car for yeah, protection. exactly, protect your car for years. You don't have to do anything. Mm-hmm. Washing your car and protecting it, even if it's coated with a silica spray, that is still constant maintenance. Yes. Yeah. So some guys just like to wash their car, put a good wax on it or sealant, yeah. and they do that once a month. Yeah. 
their car will still look just as good if you ceramic coated it and you still maintain it properly mm -hmm. and you just save yourself money. Good That's, point. It's all up yeah. to what people want That's to do and what they want to pay for. But to compare though, the ceramic coating with that regular maintenance, which consists of like a polymer wax or sealant. Yep. Uh, the wax though, if let's say if your car is always waxed, you wash it regularly, wax it regularly, you know, if, if, even if you get a wax and do it, you know, regularly. Yeah. And while in, you're driving the car, there is a pro and con with, with the pro on ceramic coating also that it protects better from UVs. It's like a glass layer with, where the wax is like a polymer paste. Exactly. An actual wax. Yep. Uh, and the wax is not that it attracts dirt, right? But it sticks to, just like a wax candle. Mm -hmm. right? You roll it on the asphalt, you know it's attracting the dirt. Exactly. So, and what I, I think that's what makes the car to become with time lose its gloss oxidized yep. it's not because it's not totally because the sun's hitting it but it's also because the dirt that's on the car while it's dirty yeah cooks into the paint and eats through the clear coat it lose that shine the layer of shine right exactly it's contaminants right contaminants contaminants yes. yep that's yes. why we use the clay bars to remove mm -hmm. all that gunk that's stuck onto it and yeah all that stuff that you'll lose that that gloss and that shine just so much faster yeah and yeah, that, that's and why you gotta keep up on it. And the ceramic will protect it better, right? The, the ceramic, why we have the ceramic compared to the other? Definitely. The maintenance though on the ceramic is is cheaper because you, you just put silicone there, you wash yeah. it, because the dirt won't stick to it, so there's not much. Self-cleaning ability, right? Yeah. Yep, yeah. exactly. Oh yeah, that's it's, it's a huge difference night and day when you're washing the vehicle and with, maintaining with this, it between just with, waxing and sealing it or coating yeah. it. You can tell right away. I love washing ceramic coated cars. Yeah, it's, it's so easy. It's so nice. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of pros and cons for that. So if you're interested in looking for um, a ceramic coating, you know, Andre and I, we're here in the Richmond area. Um, he is mobile as well. He has a really nice shop also. I'm mobile um, and I, I have a garage at my home that I do ceramic coating. So if you guys are interested, if anyone watching this is interested in the Richmond area and surrounding areas, and getting your vehicle ceramic coating. There's a lot of different options. Um, both of us can install G-Technic products. He also installs Ceramic Pro, um, certified installer, I believe. Yes, for, for Ceramic, Ceramic Pro. Pro. Yes. Um, I will do Car Pro, this is the C Quartz line. I will do Gion with the Synchro Kit line um, and some G-Technic as well. I've been leaning towards Car Pro and Gion recently because they're, they're really good products, very easy to use. Um, and they can last a couple of years on your vehicle. Uh, we can also do wheels off, you know, protecting your wheels mm -hmm. uh, as well. That's that's also a big thing, makes cleaning your wheels easier. Yeah. Do it all the way, resistant. right? <laughs> yeah, do it all the way. Coat it all exactly. the way. No separating parts, coat this, coat that. Just exactly. Get it your windshield, your glass, your yeah. plastic trim, all of that. It just, it protects your vehicle, but it just makes it so much easier to maintain. Yeah. It's That's one of the pros it to looks nice. coating it. Easy yeah. to maintain. It, does, it looks it nicer rains, for longer. That water beating, so that's easy. enjoyable. Yeah, that's yeah. super satisfying to <laughs> to uh, to watch. So let's talk about what to look for um, when you're shopping around for a detailer. Now um, that can kind of be a risky thing because I get calls from people where they say I'm new to the area and I, I want to find a detailer. I don't know who to go to. I don't know you know some of the questions to ask or if they have never had this done before. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I don't know, what is mobile detailing? What do you guys do? Do yeah. I, like, what do I do in preparation for it? And there's a lot of questions out there. Yes, yeah. Uh, do I really that. need it? Is it? Do you really need it? Yeah. How yeah. much is it going to be? <laughs> That's a big yeah. question, you know. Because it, 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 it's, it's more costly than just a car wash. And people yep. who don't know that, you know, just you know, like, why would I get a detail if car wash, it seems like it's the same thing when I'm getting it out. Yeah, it, yeah. Seems it seems like the same like, thing. Yeah. All right, so I want to get your idea on that. What is your thing that you say to customers where they're like, well, I can just go to carpool or go to a local car wash for $5 or less. Why would I spend $100, $200, mm -hmm. $250 to get it fully detailed inside and out? Right. Why would I do that? I, I'm, I, me personally, I'm, sometimes, I'm honest with them and asking, okay, do you really want detailing done in your car? Like, what, what type of vehicle do you have? I, I personally had a, uh, a truck before. It was beat up. I, I, the paint was getting oxidized. I really didn't care you know, about the paint. I just wanted it washed. And 
and then I, I can recommend. I was like, I, I'd never recommend machine wash because I, as a detailer, mm -mm. nope. I can't even if it's a, uh, you know, an older car. I was like, uh. it's unethical <laughs> for a detailer to offer. It that. is yes, it it becomes unethical, but as far as that, you know, as but that's the difference though. Even when I went in my truck, you know, clean sometimes on the interior. Let's say I didn't care mm. about the paint. I would still not take it to a car wash because I would want a floor shampoo to to feel fresh also, you know? Yeah. And that, that's more towards the detail, detailing side, you know, yeah. to make it even cleaner. But and that's on the clean side, cleaning, you know, cleanliness, but there's also the protection. Yep. Um, if you really care about your car and having it, you know, the paint maintained for a while you have it. Not you're gonna if you're thinking about selling it later, it's gonna increase the value, you know, um, or retain. Yeah. Not in, you know, retain the value because of the paint. It's not gonna become dull with time. Exactly. And it's hard to understand. I I you know for people to that is not familiar with detailing, they're like oh I I don't you know I don't want to put anything on my car. No waxes. I'm just <laughs> a good wash. It's gonna look good, but. You know, it's just like for your skin, like you compare that to the to the skin that having the protected. Yeah, you know I do the same thing. Mm -hmm. I say that to people. It's like, it's like washing your own body. You know, are you just gonna yeah. use garbage products? You know, cheap products, yeah. or do you want to buy something that has moisturizer and you know SPF protectants and all these things because you're concerned about your own skin? Yes. So you know, the vehicle isn't a you know doesn't have a living skin on it, but. Mm -hmm. It does have a surface that you need to protect. Yes. It needs some sort of care. It needs some sort of polishing, exfoliant, you know, clay yeah. barring, deconning, and then a protection on top to make it look its best and, and also last its longest. Yeah. And um, I think also some people that they they can have the perception that looking into the interior of a car or they take to a quick car wash and a car wash can make it look nice inside. If, if people like, sh I hate it, but if people mm -hmm. like shiny dashboard, Mm -hmm. They're gonna think, oh, it's protected. You know, there's a layer of protection there, which in reality it's the opposite. It's yeah. making it worse. Exactly. You know, they can use silicone on the dashboard, and then when it gets hot, it can evaporate to the windshield, mess everything up. Plus, yep. it degrades the surface itself. It does. And it doesn't look that original, like new. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I like that look too. I like the nice, like, matte to to satin mm -hmm. finish that or natural look. They say. Natural yes. Look. I like that as well. And I think that's what detailing accomplishes to acquire that if you don't have it, as you know, detailing to get it back to that or maintain it like that, especially yeah. a new car. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Exactly. It's almost like hitting the reset button. If you have a mm -hmm. gross car, hitting, hitting the reset button and everything is brought back to original. Yes. You know, as best as possible. You know, there are some vehicles that you can't really do much with. Mm -hmm. um, I get those a lot with gross cloth seats that. You can throw as much chemical and shampooing and steam at it, but it only looks 50% better. Yeah. But yeah. if you keep up on it, it won't get to that point. Yeah. So exactly. the detailing aspect of it and doing it properly um, is is so important. And and I like that that idea of asking the customer, why do you want to get it detailed? Do you want to get mm -hmm. it detailed, or are you just looking for something basic? I'll I'll ask yeah. that question. Yeah. And they'll say no. I I, I want to spend the money. I want it to look as best as it possibly can and then you know that the person is serious you know that customer is yeah, serious and exactly. they want to pay to get that vehicle cleaned up and and done so professionally with the right products and tools and, and knowledge mm -hmm. uh, and it. I've gotten some customers before actually who call and they thought they wanted just a quick car wash because mm -hmm. I asked them on the phone it was like no I just want a quick car wash and we are detailers but then I ask okay well, what are you looking for your interior just like I use the shampoo example it's like oh, I want my carpets refreshed to look clean that's detailing, yep, right? It is. And so it is actually, the detailing is not only, like we were talking about ceramic coating, super expensive services. Yeah. It's the maintenance that it's not costly also. Mm -hmm. you know? it, it, at the end of the day, you, you're gonna pay a little bit more for detailing than the car wash, but you don't wanna wait to then have it to pay much more for detailing for the damage that we acquired hey. to going cheap exactly exactly yeah if you mm -hmm. if you wait too long and the carpets are so dirty that they are beyond detailing because there there is such a thing <laughs> you know i know you've run into it i've run into it so many of the detailers run into it um there's a lot of hype out there on social media platforms where they just show cleaning of something carpets or upholstery and it comes out perfect mm -hmm. 
Sometimes it does. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. But in reality, it's not always the case. And yeah. I've run into that all the time where I'm like, I'm doing everything, but it doesn't quite come out right. Or something draws up. Yeah. Um, or something happens and it's not quite coming out that way. But, you know, if you get to it early enough and you keep up on it, then you will never have that problem. Because when it gets to that point where it's just so bad that cleaning doesn't do anything, now you gotta do something else. Maybe mm. replace it. Yeah. Or buy a cover and cover it. But yeah. most people will or not like sometimes that. Sometimes when it gets to that point, that's it's, it, that's when it's not even worth to pay so much money to re restore it back. Because yeah. you've gotten to a point that it's too much, you know. It's, yeah. it's too much. That detailing. That's what I love about your videos, like a detailing to, like what is the reality? What can we accomplish? And a lot, you reality. know, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. But shows that, you know, uh, sometimes the car looks the dirtiest and we clean to where it looks almost brand new. Yeah, I've Some had Some cars those. looks the dirtiest and you clean it and, you know, we can tell the customer, mm, you know, it, hmm. th that's damaged. <laughs> yeah, that's damaged. Yeah. yeah. Wear marks or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. So, so the importance of calling a detailer and... <laughs> Uh, so the importance of calling a detailer and asking questions, like don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, sometimes mm -hmm. if I'm booked up and the person wants it right away and they're like, oh, I, I really want you to do it, but I'm booked up for like two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, well, you know, can you refer somebody and I'll refer them to you. There's a couple of other detailers I refer them to in the area. And before when I didn't really know anybody, I would say, I, I don't really know anybody in the area. However, mm -hmm. whoever you call, ask questions ask them questions what do they use yes for clean not necessarily product wise but because yeah. of you questioning them um, they should know their stuff yeah and if they don't it'll become very apparent right away that they're just like oh, i just use this and this or i what and they don't know how to answer the question and they just want to great point they just want to sell you the detail yeah. without explaining things i yeah. love explaining things and it, it, it's just like you said uh it's nice when the client also knows detailing mm -hmm. because you're talking to them when we're we're being real with our clients yep but let's say for a client and you don't know about detailing and oh what question should i ask but sometimes in their tone of voice you can tell that you know they're doing it just to oversell or things like that so it's important to to ask what's going to happen because detailers should uh educate you yeah on what to expect. Yes, exactly. That, that's actually a really good point. That's an important point of being a detailer. Mm -hmm. It's not just knowing your stuff and having years of experience, but being able to just talk to the customer and explain what you're doing, kind of in layman's terms, you know, without yeah. going overboard. There's some things that they may not understand. Like when I say um, our full detail includes washing, clay barring, I briefly explain what clay barring is. Just briefly, just so they get the point. Yeah. Because some of them will ask, like, what is that? And I said, well, it's basically a process where we use a clay bar and a lubricant after we wash, and it makes your paint nice and smooth. It removes mm -hmm. all the gritty bits that are stuck in your paint. Yeah. That's like it. And they're like, oh. cleanse. Yeah, mm -hmm. like an exfoliating. Uh -huh. it, yeah. Simple explanations, and they're like, oh, okay, I like that. But I'm a, I'm a huge advocate of communicating and explaining, maybe over-explaining sometimes, mm -hmm. but you kind of build that confidence with a person, too, yeah. that you enjoy what you're doing, you yeah. enjoy kind of even educating about it, and and the customer will see that, and they and they like that. Yeah, that's exactly. what they want. They want someone who knows what they're doing, but can talk to you and explain what you're doing as well. Um, I think that's just really good customer service. Yeah, to be able to explain what you're doing. Yeah, educate um, them. On, educate them on what they should expect for their cars. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and and a, a huge thing is being very humble about it too. Because um, I, I know some guys can be kind of arrogant about it. I've been doing this for so many years. You shouldn't. Don't yeah. question me. Just let me do my work. Mm -hmm. eh, I don't yeah. know. That's kind of that's a little arrogant. I don't like that. I, I like to be on their level, you yes. know, and talk to them like a normal human, and and be humble and just explain to them stuff. Yeah, you may know more about car care, mm -hmm. but treat your customers with respect. Yeah. And yeah. and that will really come across even on the phone. You know, when you're talking to someone, that'll really come across and just get to know them, laugh with them, and be very mm -hmm. personal with them. And uh, and hopefully you'll get a client yeah. for a lifetime. <laughs> and and normally, like if if if, if other de uh, if some detailers want to be like you said, like they know it all. Yeah. You know, they want to ask clients questions and 
know about their car, you know, then how how are you gonna offer what they actually need? Yeah. You know? uh, with an example of me, if I were to offer a ceramic coating to a client, you know, I recommend that type of service. Let's say for most new cars, if a person wants to keep the car, or you know, for a certain amount of time, I'll definitely recommend it. You know, I'll do what I can to have that person invest because I see that as an investment. Yep. But if I don't ask the question, hey, how many? Are you selling the car next month? I'm not gonna go and offer that ceramic coating. It's not worth for the client, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you knowing their understand. needs. Understand. Yeah. Yeah, that that's big too. No, knowing their needs and not offering things that they don't that they just don't need. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right, guys. So this was the Wings Mobile Detailing Podcast, and we're finishing up. Uh, so I'm gonna throw some links to you guys, obviously, in the description below. Uh, but we covered two topics today. Actually, we were along with Philip here from around the Auto Spa. This video on this podcast, we're going to post, Philip is going to post on, what, what's the link? Yeah, on Miranda Detailing on uh, YouTube. So definitely give our channel a follow. Uh, it'll be down below in the description. Uh, but yeah, check out Miranda Detailing on YouTube. We have a ton of videos on there. Interior, exterior videos, how-tos, and we have plans in the future for a lot more. Sweet. And get up to date, guys, on that training thing with going to his YouTube, to his, uh, YouTube channel. And you're get, definitely going to see this video posted there soon, along with the live. Thank you very much for, for joining us today and for staying with us throughout this podcast.